This is Lisa from Mobile Tech Review, and this is the Nook tablet. Think of it as the Nook color, too. In fact, from the outside, you almost wouldn't know that this was a different model. This is a slightly lighter gray bezel, but other than that, we've got the exact same industrial design. It's lost an ounce or two weight, which is a good thing. You still have that distinctive little grab handle over here. The Nook button in the middle that, that brings you to all things Command Central. You can go to Home, Library, Shop, Search, Apps, Web, and Settings right here. And on the side we have our hardware volume controls, something that the Amazon Kindle Fire lacks. 3.5 millimeter headphone jack up here, microphone. Your power button back here. And that extra special sauce underneath this little door, just like the last Nook color. We've got a micro SD card slot here. It doesn't come with a card. You can put a card in here of your very own. SDHC high capacity cards are accepted. Speaker back here. Nice little rubbery back. Much the same as the no color. In fact, almost identical. What changes what's inside here. We still have the same 7 inch IPS display technology, which means nice, sharp, really wide viewing angles, 1024 by 600 resolution. Pretty common for 7 inch tablets of all kinds. But inside, we've now got a dual core 1 gigahertz CPU that's much, much faster than the 800 megahertz single core CPU that was in the Nook Color. Nook Color became the poor man's tablet because for $249, it was a pretty nice tablet for the money and a lot cheaper than anything else on the market. But it was really a little sluggish. A lot of folks rooted it. It was very easy to do. I'm sure this is going to be rootable. Put your own apps on there, put Adobe Flash on there, and you discover, well, kind of sluggish. This guy zips right along. Nice improvement. It also has twice the, the memory inside, twice the RAM that is to run programs. It has a gig of RAM, whereas the old one had 512 megs of RAM. And we have 16 gigs of internal storage, which is a big marketing point for Barnes & Noble versus the Kindle Fire. Here's the gotcha, though. Of the 16 gigs, only one gig is available for your use. Everything else is reserved for BNN content. And they say also they're going to be partnering with some third-party multimedia probably video delivery services, and that space is reserved for that. So you don't get a whole lot of accessible user internal storage there. Underneath this runs Android OS 2.3 Gingerbread, just like the Kindle Fire, and uh, that's essentially the phone version of the Android operating system, not the new Honeycomb version. But the reason I do that is because it's a lot easier to customize 2.3. Google has pretty straight rules about what you can do with Honeycomb at this point and completely changing the UI, which both Amazon and BNN have done, it would be against the rules. We've got, this retains a bit more of the, uh, the look and feel of Android than the Kindle Fire does, though it's really still highly customized, but at least you, you do have a desktop here and you can see the little dots up there, I tell you. You can switch between your desktops and you can put books up here, you can put application shortcuts, customize it in that way. It doesn't run widgets like a straight normal Android tablet would, say like the HTC Flyer that sells for $299. So you're a more sandboxed here. Now, of course, if you root it, you can do all sorts of things to it. In terms of interface, things have pretty much stayed the same, and that's not a bad thing because BNN really got it right here. And, and I find it actually a little bit more friendly than the Kindle Fire. The Fire is not bad. You can see there's always a keep reading link here to whatever book you've been reading last, and there's also a little book icon down there that takes you back into your book. And if you want to go home, just press that and choose home. Or you can quickly switch into shop or your apps or a web browser. And of course, settings as well. And we've got shortcuts here to books, the newsstand, movies, music, and Nook apps. So if we take a look at the books, it's pretty much the same stuff that we've seen before. Once again, we've got the book that I'm reading currently right here. And we've got recommendations based on that book also. And this is a side-scrolling. Newsstand shows periodicals, and they did a really good job with, with periodicals. Take a look at magazines. They're very well done. And this really hasn't changed again from the Nook color. And, and very fast, very rich. And then you can see it'll sync to furthest red page. And you can use this in landscape mode if you want to. I would say that these are better done in portrait because really the layout is more suited to that. So here's an article right here, and we can get an overview of each page too, so if you want to go quickly through the pages, you can do that. You can tap in, zoom, 
And there's also an article mode as well, so you can just read the text because, let's face it, this is a little small on a 7-inch screen. Barnes & Noble says this is good for 11 and a half hours of reading or 9 hours of video playback. And since Barnes & Noble has many bricks and mortar stores, you, you can bring your, your Nook tablet in there and you can read for free while you're in store and get free Wi-Fi and get assistance from the staff members. Something that Amazon can't offer, but then again, I would say for online support, Amazon still wins in terms of customer service. If you want to access your library, you just tap here, and there's your library. Right now we're looking at our application library of shortcuts to books, magazines, newspapers, Nook Kids stuff, which is really pretty cool, and my stuff, which is documents. We'll take a look at that later. So here's the books that I have preloaded here, and it also shows me stuff that's basically my archive, anything that I have purchased or any samples that I've requested at some point from me, and then it'll show up here, and anything that isn't downloaded, it says download, you just tap it, and there it is, you download it. In terms of books, we've got pretty much, again, the same thing as with the Nook Caller. Here we have a book open that I made a bookmark on, like any touchscreen ink reader or LCD reader. Generally, tapping up in the corner is going to set you up a bookmark. You can turn page animations on and off, and you can either swipe or tap to change a page. Page turn speed is obviously fine. There's no e-ink refresh rate, because this is not an e-ink device. It is an IPS LCD display. Tap near the top, and it brings up options here. You can get to your table of contents. You can do a search. You can share. And, of course, it supports Nook Friends and Nook Lending. And you can change your fonts. And this is a pretty good selection of fonts here, serif and sans serif fonts. They're also similar to what the... Kindle Fire now offers, you've got more options with colors, backgrounds, that kind of thing, and many different point sizes for text, triple different line spacing right here, margin settings, and you can just go with the publisher defaults, turn that on and off. This is an EPUB reader, it works with Adobe DRM books, both Nook format books, which use a credit card based DRM scheme, and the standard Adobe DRM that's used by Kobo Books, Sony Reader, Google Books, so it's all compatible with this. And we also have access to brightness here, right on the screen, which is nice if you're reading and it's a little too bright or a little too dark. And we have Discover, which of course is shopping oriented. Now even though I sideloaded this book, it's able to match up the book since I have ISBN information and such on my book. And it's showing me things in store that are similar to what I'm reading right now. And when you're in a book, say you want to look up something. Press and hold on it. And you can make notes, you can highlight, and you can look it up. And you can search as well while you're at it. So if you want to look it up, it's nice. It's a little compact window here. It doesn't really interrupt the flow too much if you want to look something up. And you can also Google and Wikipedia. There's a shortcut that takes you to Google. Go back to the book just by tapping the book icon and say, well, you need the Wikipedia after all. Nicely done. Now when you're reading EPUB books, either ones that you've got from BNN or your own side-loaded books, you can read in landscape mode if you like, but I'm not sure why you would want to. But you can do it, and it does paginate that way as well. If we take a look at applications, BNN also has their own app store. Not as many apps as uh, Amazon has in their app store, but some of the basics are here. This is what I've got pre-installed right now. You've got an email application for POP3 and IMAP email. I've downloaded Evernote, ever so popular. It does Hulu Plus and Netflix. These were both pre-installed out of the box. In fact, there's Netflix integration right into the settings. You can set up your account information right there. Netflix works great on this, by the way. So there's things like Seismic, the Twitter client, Pandora, a media player that sees media files that I've sideloaded just perfectly well. And if you want to check out more apps, you go right here and it's done by category. Now, there are some notable omissions here, like I wanted to find a file manager. There are none available here. So if you root and do things like that or just sideload the Android market, because this does not have the full Android market, then you can add those things, but otherwise it's a no-go if you're not a little bit of a hacker. So we've got games here, we've got Angry Birds, all that kind of thing, and this is certainly capable of handling that given the fast dual-core CPU. Nook Kids is always a cool thing. They have interactive books. It really, they're so far doing the, the best of anybody. There are some pretty cool iPad books for kids, too. But So you got Read to Me, Read to Myself, Read and Record. Red. Green Bug's tomato car is red. Loli's apple car is red. So is his sneaker. Fire engines are red. Good for you! There we go, we've just covered the color red. And some books are even more interactive in terms of what you tap on and what you do. 
If you're wondering why this is a microphone other than for trying to side, side load or download some VoIP based applications, see with kid books you can read and record. So say you want to narrate a book for yourself or your child. Really cool feature. You choose that and just hit the record button and you start talking. When you're done, you hit done. And last we have My Stuff, which is anything that you put in the My Files folder, anything that you've used for Lend Me and archived items. So in My Files, I've put some. PDF, so you can see what that's like. First, we're going to look at a book. You know, some libraries still do lend in PDF format, which isn't always a glorious thing. And I can open this with Quick Office as my options, or with the BNN Reader. We're going to use the BNN Reader for this one. And there you have it. And you can pinch and zoom, but you know, text is a little bit small, and PDF is still not ideal for 7 inch displays, even on LCD, but you can swap it into landscape mode, which is eminently more readable, though perhaps inviting a lot of scrolling. But yes, it can do it. Now how about something that's heavily illustrated? We have a user manual for a notebook computer here. And again we're using the BNN reader to look at it. And there we've got illustrations. And we'll try it in landscape mode. And that's pretty readable for a heavily illustrated PDF. There is no changing point size or anything like that, so you're always going to have a real true PDF view here. You can't blow out the layout or anything like that. And down here on our scrollable list, you can see we have an application called My Media, and that's for playing, looking at your photos. This is a bunch of sample photos it comes with in video. We've got a 1080p high profile video here that we're going to try out. Uh, kind of pointlessly high resolution because this does not have HDMI out or DLNA. So you probably wouldn't play anything this high resolution, but Nice to know that it can do it. So here we go, it's playing just fine, and boy, that speaker is pretty loud for a 7-inch tablet, too. So there's locally stored MPEG-4 content, that's what it plays, works just fine. You can also view JPEG images on this, too, using basically the gallery application from Android. Basic playback controls here. It does remember where you were, if you walk away, hit stop, and then come back to it. Alright, so how about Netflix? I know a lot of you are probably excited by that. And by the way, this does do Hulu Plus as well, but we're going to check out Netflix right now. So here we are playing Netflix. It looks really good. This is a very nice screen, along with that good speaker. And it's streaming over Wi-Fi, able to live in N. This does not have 3G. If you do have a phone with a mobile hotspot feature, of course you could use that with this tablet to have internet access anywhere. So Netflix is a big go. And this is what your Netflix interface looks like. It's got a whole bunch of suggested stuff here. Of course, you do need to have a Netflix account to use this. And all of these are side-scrolling. So you can look at an infinite number of films going sideways. And it does also work in landscape mode. And we've got a music player on board, plus a 3.5 millimeter jack, so gives me the options of using my two music apps here or finding some more music apps. We're just going to go with the straight music player. I think you all know what Pandora looks like. And there it is. Complete with cover art. You can switch to a listing view, you can search for stuff loop and all that kind of thing, and yes, it plays in the background, so if you want to listen to music while you're reading, you can do that. And lastly, we'll take a look at the web browser. This is your usual Android WebKit-based web browser. Operates in portrait and landscape mode. And we'll get to see the on-screen keyboard here, which is large and lovely. I like this better than Kindle Fire. It's a teeny little keyboard. This is more robust, easy to use. And you can turn little clicking sound effects on and off for the keyboard as well. So I'll check out the New York Times. Here's the New York Times full web page by default, which is nice. Responsive to scrolling. It's a very good experience there. And there's an embedded video on the front page. Let's check that out. Plays full screen. Plays well. So nice. Also handy for access to more simple things like the Wikipedia and all that.
And you've got access to pretty much all, you can favorite right here, and you, you've got access to all of the, the Android type settings right here. Which runs in portrait mode, the screen. So you've got control of your browsing experience. And now we'll check out our own website and watch some flash. This is your bookmark screen here. Close our website quickly enough. And we'll take a look at our Kindle Fire video review. Using Adobe Flash Player. And then we'll pop it out to full screen 480p. Plays fine, plays smoothly, and the controls are very usable as well. And now, of course, we've got to compare it to the Kindle Fire here on this side. Kindle Fire is a little bit more compact. They both have 7-inch displays. It's just the casing is a little bit smaller. The, the Nook, surprisingly, weighs just a little bit less. This is 14.6 ounces versus 14.1, both of them being a little bit on the heavy side. You're talking about a weighty book there. Not too bad, but both have IPS displays. And in bright light, I would say that the Nook is a little bit more contrasty and readable. But they're both rather nice displays. And then from the back, the Kindle has that kind of soft touch finish, and this has a mm, slightly rubbery plastic back. And your side view. We're going to be doing a full comparison smackdown of these two, so be sure to come back and watch that. So that's the Barnes & Noble Nook tablet, available on November 18th. I was popping up in a couple of stores early, and it's $249, $50 more than the Kindle Fire, $50 less than the HTC Flyer, which is just a straight Android OS 2.3 gingerbread tablet, though supposedly at some point that one's going to get honeycomb. So what do you get for your $50 versus the Fire? You get more internal storage, though it's not really user accessible. It's something to keep in mind. And you get that micro SD expansion slot. You also get hardware volume controls on this guy. And for those of you who prefer EPUB format, or the Barnes & Noble store, it's obviously an easy choice. This guy is EPUB based and it works with Barnes & Noble. For those of you who are all about Kindle products and services, well, Amazon certainly has a leg up there. They both work with public library books. They both can display PDFs. I'm Lisa from Mobile Tech Review. Visit our website to read the full review of the Barnes & Noble Nook tablet.